Hi, welcome to another edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. I'm your host, Rich Harrington, and today we're going to take a look at how you can combine filters with blending modes. Now the great news here is that most people love their filters, and if they just learned how to use blending modes, their filter collection would be enormous. That's because when you take filters and you use them with the blend mode, you get a whole bunch more effects than you ever got from the original filter itself. Let's jump in and just try it with a simple photo. You could download the picture I'm using if you have our book, Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS4. Otherwise, just open up one of your own. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this picture so I'm working with a copy. And we'll work here on this top copy called Parrot. And what I'm going to do is start to filter the image. Now, we could choose Filter. And let's do something here like a stylize effect and we'll do Find Edges. Now when we do that, it does an interesting effect and traces the edge, but there was no dialog box to that filter. That means there was nothing you could do to modify the filter because it was simply a find edge filter. It just did its results with no input from you, the user. But immediately after running a filter, you can actually choose Edit Fade. And when you do that, you get an opacity slider that you could tweak, as well as blending modes, so you could play with how those modes are used. So for example, there's that Find Edges filter being used to create a nice edge effect while still preserving the original colors in the image. Here's the photo, and here it is with that Find Edges applied, which really just gave it a more Illustrator-like look. Let's carry that a bit further by choosing Filter, Artistic, Watercolor. Now, this is going to load those colors in, and it does a pretty nice job. Let's play with the intensity of the shadows there and a little bit of texture and play with the amount of detail and click OK. Now that did a nice job up here, but way too dark down below. And what I want to immediately choose is Edit Fade Watercolor. And we could play here doing things like screen mode to drop out those darks or even something a little more gentle like soft light and back off the opacity. And you see here's our original. And here's our new look, which definitely looks more along the lines of an illustration or a painting. Now, this fade command is absolutely great. It works in all versions of Photoshop that have layers. The only drawback is, is you must choose it immediately after running the filter. Can't do anything else. Make a new selection, click anywhere in the image. You have to choose it as the next step. Well, that could be a bit of a drag. Fortunately, though, you can combine this with what's called smart filters inside of Photoshop and get very similar results. Let's go ahead and trash this top layer here. And I'm going to select the bottom layer, right click and say convert to smart object. Now when I do that, it takes the contents of that layer and nests it inside a smart object which is protected. A smart object is essentially a layer that contains information inside. You can apply filters or transformations to the layer, but all of the original pixel data is still stored inside of there, so it can be accessed for scaling or filter blending. Let's go ahead and run some filters here. We're going to choose Filter, Sketch, Water Paper. And that's going to give it this sort of roughed, hatched look. And let's play a little bit there with contrast and the length of the fiber. And I'll click OK. And I like that, except it really blew out some of these areas. No big deal, though. Just a quick double click on this little arrow here, and that'll actually call up the same fade dialog box. And we can actually play with the modes. Let's change that to soft light and back off the opacity a bit. And you see we get a nice texturization to the image without all of that blown out or loss of detail. Let's run one more filter here, choosing Filter Blur. Gaussian Blur, and I'm going to punch that up to a nice high value, and then double click on it, and that gives me full control over the actual filter property, so I can make it more intense. Click on the double arrow here, and we get the ability to blend that filter. So I'm going to drop that to soft light mode and get a nice intensification of the colors. Now I'm going to click OK, and I really liked what that did. It really boosted the colors. But I think I want that boost to happen before the texture is applied. Well, that's the great news with smart filters. You can actually change the stacking order. So let's just put that water paper filter above the Gaussian Blur there. And that means that it's going to run the Gaussian Blur filter first and then put the water paper filter on top. And you see that got the nice intended results we want. Plus, you can actually preserve this. If I click on the smart filters mask here, 
I can grab the paintbrush and paint with black and it basically does a layer mask and you'll see here that I'm putting the original details back into the eye region, essentially masking the filter results from being applied to that particular area. So, learning how to actually use filters with commands like the fade command or smart filters with the blend options really will open your filter collection up. And this is just one more example of how blend modes absolutely rock. Every pro I know uses blend modes extensively in every project they do. They are really the true secret to power inside of designing with Photoshop. My name is Rich Harrington. I invite you to check out our resource blog at rastervector.com where you'll find articles, free image downloads, and lots of cool things to check out. Thanks again.